We thank Commissioner John Steinbrecher. Let's now start with uh, all the programs in the Mid-American Conference, and we begin with the Bowling Green Falcons. And defensively, well, this is a football team that uh, not only in the MAC, but certainly flies way on top of the radar, as you see defensively, one of the finest defensive programs, uh, as I said, in the MAC and in the nation as well. And we're delighted to join the head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons, Dave Clawson, Gabe Martin, one of the stalwarts of that defense. Gentlemen, welcome. We take a look at uh, that defense. David, let's start right there. I mean, in this era and age of uh, high-octane, high-profile offenses, your belief in that side of the football and that system paid huge dividends a year ago. Uh, what are the challenges in keeping that consistent and having one of the top defenses in the conference and in the nation going forward? Well, I think any time you talk about trying to sustain something, you're asking for failure. I mean, we got to push those guys to try to take that thing to another step. And uh, the challenge is that you're losing two great players. Uh, Chris Jones was the MAC Defensive Player of the Year. He's now with the Houston Texans. I mean, he was a legitimate dude for us. He impacted every game, every play, uh, and he showed up, whether it was Florida, Virginia Tech, I don't care who you played, and that's why he's in the NFL right now. And then Dwayne Woods was a three-time all-conference linebacker. So we have a lot of really good players back, but you also have two very good players that we've, we've got to replace. and. Uh, you know, that's not a one-for-one one sub. There's a lot of guys that got to raise their game to fill that hole. Dave and Gabe, obviously you lost two huge difference makers on your defense, but, but Dave, you've got this young guy back, Gabe Martin, uh, Boo Boo Gates, who is a former NFL secondary coach. I love him. Uh, you've got some guys that have the potential to take over the leadership of that defense. We do. And, I mean, Gabe's a first-team all-conference player. Boo-Boo's a first-team all-conference player. Cam Truss is a all-conference corner. Uh, there's guys that have played at a high level for us. I think Ted Allett is an all-conference player. Is back for us. I think Jarris Campbell, if he had stayed healthy, would be an all-conference player. And I think we have some guys that played last year and started last year for the first time that a lot of times that second year you start is when you take that major jump. And there's a handful of those guys playing for us that if they take that step that we expect them to take, you know, I think there's a lot more names you're going to be talking about on that side of the ball. I was asked Gabe about that because first team OMAC performer. Gabe, uh, you know, as an upperclassman, when you look at a leadership role in a capacity, uh, as Coach mentioned, losing Chris and Dwayne, uh, how do you take that upon yourself in terms of inspiration and uh, having, having young men on both sides of the football following your lead? Well, I think our defense is taking it on as a whole. Um, I feel like everybody's pushing each other. It's more of like a, a competition internally. So uh, everybody wants to be better. And I think the intensity that we play with, along with like the competition amongst the guys, has pushed us to just everybody Everybody wants to be, be better. And it's making our team better. You know, uh, Dave, last year uh, when we talked, and, and this spring when we talked, you said, Last year we had to have, use trickery on offense to make big plays. So you, you did. Have you improved there? You know, I know your wide receivers were young last year, but I mean, do you have guys that could just flat go out and make a big play now offensively? Well, that, that's what needs to happen. And I think if you look at the development of our defense, we were playing with the same guys two years ago and giving up 35 points a game, and nobody was talking about a. Uh, Yep. You know, a vaunted Bowling Green defense. I mean, offenses couldn't wait to play against us. And we, we've basically played with the same players, and two years later they've developed, and we need that same thing to happen on offense. Um, our lack of ability last year to create big plays within a normal play hurt us. So we're faking reverses and double passes and things like that, and that's how we generated big plays. And at some point you'd like to hand the ball off, make a guy miss, and you said in the, the you know, PAT team out there. We didn't do a lot of that last year, but right. if we can get the development from young receivers, you know, Chris Gallon at times last year was a big time player. The game he played at Kent was as good of a game that we had from a wide receiver last year. Now, can he be a factor like that in nine of our games? Can Sean Joplin take the next step? Ryan Burbrink, we have some young slots. Can we have a tailback that becomes a home run hitter? No. And, and those are the things now that could elevate our offense because we, we've become a consistent defense because we've done, we've played with the same players. Can we have that same growth on offense? And to me, that's, if we're going to take that next step as a, as a program, that has to happen this year. David, speaking of taking the next step, your eight win football team last year, you won six games uh, in conference. It's your fifth year now with this program. So virtually, 
Now, every young man is a Bowling Green Falcon you recruit. Mm -hmm. How much of a difference can that make in terms now that every young man that wears the orange and brown was recruited by you and your staff? Well, I think it helps because I think every single one of them knows that the reason they're in their pro in our program is we believed in them. You know, we said we want you to to join us, and I think when a player comes into a program and knows that these people believe in me, um, there's less evaluating going on. Sometimes when you take a program over, the players, well, I, I came to play for the last staff, and they're going to evaluate what you're doing. The evaluation's over; they're all in. And I think the other thing that's happened is. We have players like Gabe that came in as freshmen and bought in. They bought into the way we play defense, the way we play offense, the way we lift weights, the way we condition. And look what's happened. They've become all conference players. So because of that, there's more proven leadership in our program. There's older guys in the program that can mentor the younger players and say, do it, it works. And, uh, and that always helps. Okay, Dave. You're getting ready to head into spring football last spring, and you really shocked a lot of people by totally opening up the competition at the quarterback spot. You had Matt Sills, who's back, who has what started, what, 35 games for you. Uh, as a head coach, uh, you know, you have to make those kinds of decisions. What went into that? Well, I, I think it's across the board, and I don't think quarterback's any different. You have to play the best players. And, uh, and this isn't something I haven't shared with Matt. I, I don't think Matt played as well last year as we, we needed him to or expected him to. And I think in, in fairness to the program, you got to open every job up. And uh, so, you know, we let Matt Johnson and James Kanapke compete for it with Matt. And one of two things is going to happen. Uh, Matt Shields will retain the job because he's playing better and our program's better for it. Or if someone else wins it, it's because they're playing better. So, you know, it, it's football, it's competition. Uh, you've got to compete every day no matter what position. As a coach, I've got to go out there and compete every day because if not, somebody else is going to want my job, and that's just the way it works. So I, I don't think it's ever good as a program to say, hey, these players are safe because of what they've done. Or, you know, it's, that's, it's competitive. It's college football. And, uh, you know, whoever's going to help move our team and help us win games is going to be our starting quarterback. Gabe, as we talked about, we showed you your stout and sturdy defense. We got into that. The numbers bear that out. But for you in terms of what's the most important aspect of maintaining that presence defensively, maybe even getting better, as Coach said, to be able to deal with the prolific offenses in the MAC. Uh, just building depth, bringing the young guys along with us. Uh, the freshmen we got coming there, we would love for those guys to be able to play. Uh, different different guys on the D-line, linebacker, the DBs, just, just bringing those guys along with us. If we can get those guys on board, I'm sure that we can excel more on defense than we did last year. And Gabe Martin's going to be a huge part of that, obviously. We look forward to seeing Gabe and, as Coach said, Jerry Boo Boo Gates and all of your outstanding Bowling Green football team. Dave Clawson, Gabe Martin, best of luck. We'll see you a couple times during the year and very much look forward to it. All right, hey, thanks for having us on. Yeah, that's Bowling Green Falcon football expected to be prominent, not only in the MAC East, but in the entire spectrum of the MAC. Don't go away. A lot more coming up when we get back. We'll